our focus this morning is on diabetes in children because the number of children being diagnosed with diabetes is rising. So what causes diabetes in children? What are the symptoms? What do you need to look out for to know that your child needs to get tested? We're delighted to be speaking with Dr. Madura Joshi, who is a consultant pediatric endocrinologist. But let's now talk about management of diabetes in children. Yes. After the diagnosis, what, what's the first thing that a parent or caretaker should do? Yeah, so for type 1, as I said, uh, we cannot do much in terms of prevention mm -hmm. because there are genetic factors and environmental factors which we still don't know mm -hmm. that are at play. Mm -hmm. uh, but here, once we diagnose the children, uh, what we... David Guetta and Justin Bieber to you, and that's playing on KBC English Service. This is The Breakfast Show for Big Fun and Timeless Hits. My name is Julia Wanjiko. It is 21 minutes to 9. Stand by for Shakira. And we are on the third and final part of the big conversation where our focus this morning is on diabetes in children because the number of children being diagnosed with diabetes is rising. So what causes diabetes in children? What are the symptoms? What do you need to look out for to know that your child needs to get tested? We're delighted to be speaking with Dr. Madura Josh who is a consultant pediatric endocrinologist just before the break we're talking about the complications of uncontrolled diabetes so now on this third and final part of the conversation we're talking about management and prevention of if it's possible of diabetes dr joshi you spoke about the complications of uncontrolled blood sugar let's now talk about management of diabetes in children yes. after the diagnosis of what what's the first thing that a parent or caretaker should do yeah we sit as a team and we manage the child mm -hmm. and uh, also we ask them to maintain a sugar diary so they can understand for themselves that if they have eaten so much their sugar goes up so much mm -hmm. and if they have eaten so much and they take so much dose of insulin their sugar remains good okay then we also tell them about certain immediate complications like hypoglycemia mm -hmm. how to manage that at home then what to do on sick days what to do when the child is exercising so this is essentially the information that is imparted to them prior to discharge mm -hmm. once the child is ready and the parents are confident to take care of the child we discharge them we also give them certain instructions certain ID cards so that if something happens in school mm -hmm. the person to be contacted is available on a phone's distance and also certain instruction as to what, how much glucose to give is written on the card so this is a typical management plan that we give for type 1 mm -hmm. and a timely follow-up is advised for these children and we have a team doing that any emergencies we have emergency people taking on the calls and addressing to the issues that are arising in day in and day out mm -hmm. And we also encourage uh, the school facilities to be a part of and uh, help the child in managing type 1 diabetes. Okay. This is a management plan for type 1. Now for type 2, uh, I feel it is better prevented. You know, we can catch obesity early. We mm -hmm. can start right from the infantile feeding practices. We can go on to giving uh, feeding advice at each session when the parents and the child come to us for simple things like vaccination or, you know, those things. At that time, we could give feeding advice so that obesity at first is prevented. Once we prevent obesity, certainly we are going a long way in preventing type 2 diabetes. Uh, another way to catch these disorders early is to plot a child on a growth uh, chart and a BMI chart. Mm -hmm. That will give us an objective evidence that the child is fat or overweight or obese. Then is where that notion will go away that all plum children are healthy. Mm -hmm. When we show them where they stand in terms of the weight and height on population growth charts, it is then that they will better understand what is healthy and what is not healthy. So plotting uh, them on growth charts is very important. Giving information about healthy food is very important. Uh, making family intervention plans for obese children is very important mm -hmm. so that the entire family does the interventions that we tell them and children will look at their parents at role models. So if parents are doing something healthy, children will get that behavioral uh, uh, you know, stimulus to do it themselves. Uh, so a diet, good diet plan from a good child nutritionist is an important thing. Mm -hmm. Encouraging physical activity. A child has to be active by nature. He cannot be confined to places and you know cannot be asked to sit for long hours. They must have good rigorous physical activity at least for one hour a day. And um, things which are uh, restricting the physical activity like uh, television, screen time, uh, below two years, no screen time is to be advised. Above two years, restricting the screen time to less than one hour per day is what is advised. Less than one hour per yes, day? Yes, less than one hour per day, but what is reality is, is three hours, four hours on a Sunday, even six hours. So <laughs> that is to be uh, completely avoided. We have to take... And that's between what age, would you say? Between from two to... Two to 18, even adults. Adults, of course, we work, we don't have so much time, 
but whatever time we get, I don't think we should sit in front of the television. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We should be spending outdoor time with uh -huh. our children, quality outdoor time with our children. So that will bring about the change in, in the child at a very early age. Uh -huh. Another thing which is important from a clinician point of view is that so till now we've been concentrating on failure to thrive, undernutrition, malnutrition, mm -hmm. severe acute malnutrition. So what is being done is, you know, overzealous feeling, feeding of these children who are small mm -hmm. uh, or failure to thrive is not correct. There has to be optimal growth of these children. Otherwise, if we overzealously feed them, it is going to put them at risk for obesity later on. So optimal feeding of children who are undernourished is what is even WHO guidelines says. Mm -hmm. And uh, secondly, um, there is a certain risk of small for gestation age babies or babies who are born with a lesser birth weight of 2.5 kgs, they are at a higher risk of becoming obese. So because the baby was born small, parents should not be under an impression that I have to overfeed the child so that he gains a lot of weight. That is a wrong notion. The child has to gain optimal weight at his own speed. He has to follow his growth curve on the growth chart. This will go a long way in preventing obesity and subsequent metabolic uh, ill effects. Okay. And another thing, when these children come to our hospital at Mediheal, we run an um, array of tests as is necessary. First to find out whether they are at risk of diabetes or dyslipidemia or hypertension and then we formulate a management plan which is practical, which is um, uh, family oriented and which is individualized. Mm -hmm. So it is a team approach, both type 1 and type 2 management. Okay. So that for, for clarification, mm -hmm. like we said that you know not all plump, it doesn't mean that if a child is plump they are healthy, but they are children who can, you know, you're gaining is it weight or bad cholesterol but you're not gaining the weight mm -hmm. so you're, you're not you're not plump you're lean mm -hmm. that still doesn't mean that just because you're lean mm -hmm. you're also you don't have the risk of uh, yes. diabetes so, please clarify that yes so whatever guidelines we have uh, have been formulated so far indicate that when you check the height and weight you calculate the bmi the uh, bmi is a very uh, good indicator of the total body adiposity or body fat you know, so even I've come across patients who are football players or athletes, they are heavy, their uh, weight is also uh, high and their height is also good. But when you see the BMI, the BMI is crossing the overweight or obesity uh, cutoffs. So for them, you can counsel that, yes, if your BMI is going up, it is a kind of a good indicator mm -hmm. for uh, adiposity of fatness. Mm -hmm. And for those who have a lean body mass, which is excess, like the athletes and the football players, there are other uh, modalities which can tell us the which can quantify the body fat such as DEXA scan and all that they are high end and most often they are not uh, required most often a growth chart comes very handy and the BMI charts are also very handy to explain to the patient that look you are overweight or you are obese and you need to you know check your diet and physical activity okay and this is a question that was raised by Lydia so that's a complete no no mm. yes unfortunately for type 1 diabetes we say that uh, they can eat everything else that is home cooked and healthy the diet that the family follows can be followed by the child but sweets sweetened beverages ice creams cakes anything that has a uh, fast sugar you know that is a no-no for these children now there are many times when our patients tell us that uh, you know we have a birthday party or we have some celebration and we want to have a small piece of cake now see this has this consciousness has to come they have to come and tell us that we want to have a cake then we can adjust the doses of insulin such that on that particular day an additional dose of insulin can be given to match the calorie intake of the cake or the chips or whatever mm -hmm. so that is to be done sitting with your doctor and the doctor has to give you the plan again it shouldn't become a habit this has to be once in a while the child must understand this the parents must understand this okay uh, yes. treatment especially not like you're saying for children I wonder how the system is like in India and you know mm -hmm. what we could borrow from India for instance um, the government policy changes are under the way I feel mm -hmm. but from individual basis there is on individual basis or on institutional basis there has been a lot of change uh, there are many tertiary institutes in India who pay particular attention to type 1 diabetes mm -hmm. and uh, there is a whole multidisciplinary team which we are uh, kind of trying to set up in at Medihil hospital mm -hmm. so there is a team of a pediatrician a pediatric endocrinologist a psychologist dietitians and emergency uh, 
um, uh, people, you know, who take the patient calls on a day and night basis. Mm -hmm. So this whole team makes patients very comfortable and management of diabetes become easier for the caregiver as well as for the parents. Mm -hmm. So this is currently on institution basis, but uh, I think the government will be doing more. And when you talk about obesity, WHO has itself given very good guidelines for clinicians, for primary health care workers, and it is available on the net. And uh, catching obesity early is one of the agenda which WHO is seeing, taking very seriously, mm -hmm. particularly in our countries where we already have undernutrition on one side and overnutrition and obesity and related morbidity on the other side that is a dual burden of disease. Our focus on the big conversation this morning has been uh, diabetes in children because cases of diabetes among children are rising and in 2014 about 25,000 children in Kenya were diagnosed with diabetes and that figure has suddenly gone up. What causes diabetes in children? What are the symptoms? What, at, why are more children being diagnosed with diabetes and how can this be prevented? And also what do you need to look out for to know to determine that your child needs to be tested for diabetes, whether type 1 or type 2? We've been speaking with uh, Dr. Madhura Joshi who is a consultant pediatric endocrinologist and that brings us to the end of this conversation. But the conversation carries on on social media, Facebook, KBC, English service and on Twitter at KBC English, the hashtag to use as always, breakfast ES.